Saturday night, February 16th, Hard Rock Atlantic City, UFC Fight Pass, CFFC 72 is coming. And, uh, man, we've been overloaded with people trying to win these tickets. We're going to give away uh, the five pairs tonight at 545. Download the app to win the tickets, and uh, we'll announce those names tonight at 545. I'll have the call with uh, my broadcast partner for that, CM Punk, who is uh, just a joy to work with, by the way. No question. Uh, just overly entertaining. So much fun. And uh, right now, we're going to talk more about the card, CFFC, the future, where we going, all that. And uh, we had a couple of fighters on. If you missed those interviews with Jonathan Webb and Sean Brady from this week's shows, go to our YouTube channel and check it out. But right now, the president of CFFC, Rob Haydack, joins me on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. What's up, Rob? How you doing, Mike? I am getting excited, man. I say uh, I talked to these guys the last couple of days. It got me all pumped up. I see articles on punk. I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to get this on. Likewise, man. It can't get here quick enough. So uh, 71 at Borgata was great. 72, you know, this card, you talk about a stack card in 71. It looks like this one here might rival or even top it. We sound like a broken record, but it seems like card after card, it just keeps getting better. And I think that's a testament to the athletes out there. They're increasingly getting better for each show, and it's just it's it's worth it for us and the fans to experience that. So USC Fight Pass will have this, so everybody can watch this on their phone, on a device. Um, how much has that raised the level of people knocking on your door, calling your phone? talking to Arias, you know, the matchmaker, trying to get on these cards? It, it's made our job a little bit easier. Um, CFFC has always been synonymous with great talent. We've sent a great number of fighters on to the UFC. But now actually being on their platform and understanding that their matchmakers, their executives, and guys like Dana White are watching these events, it, it elevates the level of talent, and these guys really put on a show in hopes of getting that call. Yesterday, Sean Brady was on with us, Jonathan Webb, who had that UFC taste. Those are kind of guys that Saturday night, February 16th, they know who's watching, and they know that a performance on Saturday night could get them to that next level. It's got to be exciting for you to know that these guys are able to use your platform to get that kind of exposure and move on to the next level. Absolutely. That, that's why we exist. That's, that's the idea behind Cage Fury Fighting Championships. We want to provide that platform for rising stars to get to the next level. Every time the phone rings from the UFC and one of these rising stars gets signed, it's a feather in our cap. Rob, talk about Sean, because at the top of the card, you're looking at a kid, he told us yesterday flat out, you know, if he wins, he hopes that people are taking notice. But he also talked about how difficult it is to get notice in this field. I mean, CFFC is one of the top regional uh, MMA organizations, but these things are all over the place, and everybody is trying to get noticed. So a guy like Sean Brady, talk about how difficult these roads are for these guys, because I think a lot of times the listeners don't really understand what these guys need to do. You know, I, I got a firsthand look at these guys at 71 and talked to them and saw what they got to go through to get ready for these fights. It's an amazing story for some of these guys. No, absolutely, Mike. On, on the regional level, you know, these guys sacrifice a lot. Most of them work a full-time job, just like you and I. And then they've got to fit their training in either in the mornings before work, certainly after work, in the evenings. It's a lot of time, commitment, and sacrifices, not only for the athletes, but their family and their friends as well. So a lot of these guys, you know, they're, they're putting it all on the line to get that phone call, to get to the next level and start making, you know, some life-changing money. A guy like Sean Brady, Jonathan Webb are, are certainly um, guys that are in that level right now you know they're they're hoping to get to the ufc jonathan's hoping to get back there you know a guy like sean brady he's got everything necessary to fight at the next level but you know as well as i do we live in a different era today being being a super talented athlete is not enough anymore you've got to be marketable um sean historically has been a very humble guy 
hard worker, dedicated. Um, an argument can be made he's probably the best to ever come through our organization. So definitely a win on Saturday night. Could get him that phone call to get to the next level. Yeah, Robin, you mentioned that he might be the best, but name some other guys that the UFC MMA fans out there would recognize that have come through. And, you know, it's funny because you see guys on this card. It talks, Sean talked about this yesterday, too, about guys who have moved on that he saw come through CFFC. And then guys who are on this card that just fought recently about how active and how ready you need to be. Like, hey, man, we need a spot filled today. Boom. Paul Capaldo, he fought on the card in December. Uh, Justin Clark fought on the card in December. So these guys need to be ready and active, yet keep their eye that, yes, there are guys who have come through here that your names that you will recognize that you can also be like. No, absolutely. And, and that makes, again, our matchmaker job that much easier when young talents like a Paul Capaldo, you know, they're looking for a home where they can showcase their skills. They're looking for that organization that has a history of getting fighters to the next level. When you look at CFFC from, from the earlier days of Kimbo Slice, who made his MMA debut in Atlantic City, ultimately went on to the UFC and then to Bellator. There's other fighters like Lyman Good, Paul Felder, Jim Miller, Aljamain Sterling, Jimmy Rivera. I mean, the list goes on and on from the talent that has come through our organization. And for fans out there listening, it's a huge opportunity to go and support these local rising stars who are chasing their dreams. It, it doesn't get any more exciting than that. Yeah, and you talk about, you know, being local. A lot of the events are in Atlantic City. We had Borgata doing Hard Rock coming up. But it seems that CFFC is expanding, it's getting bigger, and it's getting more recognition, the UFC Fight Pass. Uh, it, it, you know, taking this show on the road seems to be a, a big step. No, absolutely. So, you know, we've always been synonymous with that leading organization here in the Northeast, and, and that's going to change in 2019 and certainly carry over for the years to come. We've booked venues in California. We're finalizing details in Oklahoma, Louisiana, um, Washington State, Chicago, and locally, we also do events in Pennsylvania at Parks Casino. So we will be traveling in 2019. Yeah, that's, you know, and, and, you know, look at the card. It's not guys who are just fighting out of Vineland and Philadelphia and Atlantic City. Yes, it has the Jersey flavor, but the last card, two Washington State participants, people coming from Texas. You have now are a draw to fighters all across the country. No, absolutely. And the world, and, by the way. You got, you know, fighters from Japan coming in for this week or next week. Yeah, that's correct. Japan, Costa Rica, Florida, Minnesota. Um, you know, the list goes on and on. And, again, it's a tribute to the UFC platform that, you know, we're getting viewership all over the world. Um, and these fighters recognize that, and they want the opportunity to compete at the highest level. And CFFC is the home to do that. Uh, Rob Hedick is the president of CFFC 72. It's coming to uh, Hard Rock Atlantic City Saturday night, February 16th. You can get tickets. It is a phenomenal atmosphere and event. The energy in these places are electric. And uh, I'll have the call with CM Punk on UFC Fight Pass. And getting Punk, too, I mean, th that was all over the place, right? I mean, that was something that was really a big coup for you guys. And I'll tell you what, you know, just watching his work on television – and then getting a chance to sit down with him. What a what a nice guy, number one, first off. But a student of the game, man. I, I was, like, asking him. He just loves talking about this stuff. He has been such a fantastic, I think, addition uh, for what you guys are doing. And that's just selfishly because I get to work with him. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a big thanks to Dave Schaller, who's part of our team at CFFC, um, originally with the UFC and now with the 76ers. Had a great relationship with CM Punk and early discussions before we started last year. We talked about the commentating crew, and that name was thrown out there. And for it to come to fruition and to be able to work with a guy that's professional, passionate about the sport, um, and also adds a tremendous amount of viewership to our programming, um, it's a win-win for everybody involved and everybody associated with him. Yeah, you know, that's the thing, too. For a guy who has been at the heights that he had 
and the notoriety he has to put the work that he did. That's where I think, you know, people don't understand. People think he just came in on the fly and did this. My man was prepared and was, you know, talking to these guys left and right. And uh, he, I thought he did a great job. It was it was so easy to work with him, specifically for my first time doing it. No, absolutely. Um, it, it was exciting to, to meet him for the first time. He actually doesn't know. I met him about a year ago. Um, Paul Felder was fighting. I believe it was a card in Chicago. And I looked over and CM Punk is there hanging out in the corner. And I said to Paul, I said, what is he doing here? He said, he comes out and he supports us all the time. He's our training partner, very humble guy. Um, and I got to experience that firsthand in December when he did the, uh, the commentating with you at the Brigada. And he's just a truly remarkable person. He's passionate about the sport. And like I said, we're excited to have him. And uh, it's great for our fans. It's great for the fighters. And what was cool is, you know, Punk goes into the ring and, and does the in-ring interviews, into the octagon and does the uh, interviews. And these guys are like, I'm getting a chance to talk to him. I think that's one of the coolest <laughs> moments of it all, right? Like they want to win this fight because they know that they're going to get to talk to him afterwards. Yeah, think about that. That's something that's going to live with them for the rest of their life. It's going to be footage that they have, they own. It's a really cool experience. And, like again, CM's just a great guy. He's passionate. Um, we're excited to have him back and, and you as well on February 16th. It's going to be an incredible night. Yeah, February 16th, Hard Rock in Atlantic City. Uh, it is a great card. You know, we talked to Sean Jonathan this week. Uh, which fight do you think is the one that you got to lay money out for? Every single fight, <laughs> me as, a, as, a, as a promoter, um, you know, every fight on the card is intriguing. You know, a lot of the guys that are, you know, making their pro debuts or their first or second fights, those are the fights that always tend to surprise the people in the audience. But, you know, you point out Sean Brady. Sean Brady has a huge task in front of him against uh, Taj Hakeem, who's 8-1 and one out of New York. That is going to be fireworks. Two heavy hitters. Um, that should be exciting. And then you look at a guy like Jonathan Webb, who has fought at welterweight his entire career, sees an opportunity to go up to middleweight for a title fight and doesn't hesitate. And again, he's facing a Philadelphia prospect who is undefeated in Kyle Dawkins. So, you know, again, again, I can go up and down this card. There's not a fight that stands out. They all stand out. I'm looking forward to it. You mentioned uh, Jonathan. We talked to him the other day. He said his favorite part about it is because I told him, you know, going up to 185, he doesn't have to be a miserable SOB next week, right? That's the best part about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that'll be interesting to see how he adapts to that. Um, you know, as you well know, these guys cut a lot of weight. I hate to see that weight cutting, but they all seem to do it, and everyone follows in suit. But it's going to be interesting because Kyle is a big middleweight. He's tall. Um, you know, he definitely has the reach on Jonathan. But it will be intriguing to see if not having to cut weight changes uh, the energy level and the quickness of Jonathan. So I'm I'm very excited for that fight. It's uh, Hard Rock, Atlantic City, February 16th. Uh, make sure you get out there, see the fights live, man. you got to get out there and see these live and in person. The energy in that place at Borgata last time was awesome. I anticipate uh, that it's only going to be better this time. And then as we keep moving forward, UFC Fight Pass also has it. If you want to see the commentary, I'll have the call with CM Punk. Uh, I want to ask you uh, what you think – the move to ESPN has done for the sport. Do you think that elevates the sport to just another level? Because they had their first crack at this last week, or their last card, I should say. Do you think that's something that's going to help everybody out? Absolutely. I think it's another huge step forward for the organization. Um, ESPN, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. So kudos to the UFC. I mean, every time you think they're at the, the height of where they can be, they take it another step further, and ESPN is another step in that direction. I thought they did a pretty good job for their first time out, and it uh, looks like uh, they got, uh, you know, they're, they're doing a good job of giving it a lot of attention. I sat last Saturday, Rob, and literally watched all day long. Before the leading into the Super Bowl, they had. <laughs> Uh, UFC stuff on all day long, and I sat there from about three o'clock in the afternoon until the Super Bowl began, just watching, 
you know, show after show after show. So I think they're doing a really good job of getting it out there. I'm excited, man, and I can't wait to uh, see you over there next week. Uh, we'll all get together, and it should be a good one for the listeners. February 16th, it's next Saturday at uh, Boardwalk, excuse me, at uh, Hard Rock Atlantic City. It's a unbelievable CFFC 72 fantastic card, and get your tickets to come on out and say hello to us. And, and tap us on the back and say hello, all right? Rob, we'll talk to you then, pal. All right, see you soon, Mike. Thanks.